So we've taken this opportunity while we have been installing the RRE short tube header to also do some motor mounts. Uh, the reason that we're doing that is because it's a lot easier to access the front motor mount while the header or the exhaust manifold is removed. And the rear one is a pain on either of the uh, four or six cylinders, but we're going to show you how to remove the front one today and take it out and put this one in so you can follow that same procedure for the rear one. The first step in removing the front motor mount is removing the horizontal bolt here. And you're going to need a 14 millimeter socket and a 14 millimeter uh, wrench um, on either side uh, to get it off. Now obviously you can see how much more room is in here when you don't have that exhaust manifold. And we've already loosened it up. Um, and you basically just hold one side, you ratchet the other, um, depending on what you want to do. And this should slide right out. So, next step is to actually remove the, the bolts that hold it into the cross member. So, as stated before, the, the next step is to remove the two 14 millimeter bolts that are actually holding the motor mount into the cross member. As you can see here, we have a ton of extensions to make it easier for us. Um, you don't need quite as many um, if you want to do it somewhere around this range. Uh, but this does make it easier so you can get above everything, so you can get the most amount of torque on your ratchet as possible. Um, these should already be loose. We've already removed the front one. This one should be loose. Yep. Bye bye! And it uh, just fell in the ground. So now that the motor mount should be free, um, it may take a little bit of jostling, uh, but maybe not. And you just pick it right up. And now we are ready, ready to remove the stock sleeve or motor mount from this actual mount um, and put in the energy suspension uh, polyurethane one. So the first step in getting this actual rubber mount out of the motor mount itself is to cut the two sides that it's actually attached to the inner sleeve and we have a little jigsaw here to help us with that. You can see I've already kind of cut one side I'm going to start the other one. Once we get this out, we'll show you how to cut the sleeve. So now that we've got the center out, you can kind of see here, there's an inner sleeve to the motor mount. We need to get that out next. So what we're going to do is we're going to notch it right here with the same jigsaw. Now make sure you're very careful to not obviously go all the way through this motor mount. You only want to notch this first inner sleeve here and then we'll get a chisel to get the rest of it out. So after we put the notch in, you can see we've already started You get a chisel and a dead weight hammer will work the best. Go ahead and start Chisel it away right at the edge until you start to get it to bend. Just keep chiseling it through. Eventually it will um, break and all the pressure will be released and it will be able to slide right out. So as you can see, uh, we kept hitting it right here along the cut that we made into the sleeve and it finally busted loose and you can see how it releases the pressure and it can bend. And it may take a little bit of finagling because uh, it may still be rusted in some spots. But then that inner sleeve will just slide right out. And you can see where I made that cut. Barely nicked it, but it's good. So now we're going to take the uh, drill with the abrasive uh, wheel and go around this and clean it up. So we've gotten the inner sleeve out. We've ground it out a little bit to clean up anything that was in there. The next step is to put the new polyurethane solid motor mount in. To do that, you're going to need some grease. And if you don't have a uh, press, like a shop wood, uh, you can use a couple blocks of wood and a vise, like we have here. Um, it is a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it gets the job done. So the first thing that we're going to do is grease up the inside of here. 
and grease up the uh, motor mount itself and then we'll start vicing it and uh, sliding it inside of here. So you can see here, we've got the new motor mount in. It was actually fairly simple. Uh, again, all you need is a two by four uh, and a vise. You um, have to put the even pressure on the vise. It's really easy if you have two people to help you or one person to help you. And uh, you put it in the vise, you make sure the pressure is even. It may take a couple of tries to get maybe half of it in and then re release, kind of move it down a little bit and then keep the pressure on it and push it back in and it'll all go through. Once you get it started, obviously you're going to need to pop out the other side and that's when you catch the vise just on the bottom here and you keep the 2x4 this way on the other side and it'll actually, uh, it'll, it'll kind of release the pressure kind of weirdly but it'll still work because it's pushing enough and there's all that grease in there which helps it slide through. So uh, the next and you know, final step is to make sure you've got your sleeve and just slide your sleeve in and again it's all greasy so it should slide right in like so and we're ready to put this back in the car now these are very inexpensive and um, they are for the price they are one of the best mods you can do the the transfer of power that you lose from the stock uh, motor mount is tremendous and just getting a solid motor mount like this even though it's not necessarily adding horsepower or torque it really is because you're getting that transfer from the engine to your wheels so these are highly recommended we got these on autocityimports.com the link uh, to get these is in the comments or in the uh, information below.